mutuality. How overcoming equilibrium thinking helps logistics in a fluctuating world to be on time. Katja Wint, Jacobs University. On November 9, 1989, I was a student in Braunschweig, close to the former border. I remember the first Trabis driving down the streets. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Logistics is about planning and control of all material and informa information flows in a global network. Actors in such a network are manufacturers, their suppliers, distributors, and customers worldwide. Logistics involves all main processes as procurement, production, and distribution. In our research, we concentrate on multivariant series production of technologically demanding products of high complexity. One can say that logistics is the control instrument of global, global, globalization, but obviously it is more than just transportation of goods. Logistics is also about achieving targets. Besides due date reliability, which means high punctuality, we aim to achieve a low inventory control level, a low inventory level, short delivery times, and high capacity utilization in order to produce with less cost. The challenge is that these targets are in a trade-off position, and therefore it is not possible to achieve all targets in an optimal manner. So right now, as pointed out in my title of my presentation, logistics has also to deal with fluctuations. And that is kind of terrible for achieving high punctuality. So why do we have fluctuations? Why is it a challenge to achieve high punctuality in order to deliver products on time to customers? To get answers to these questions, uh, I like to ask you the question whether you are right now, uh, whether you are ready for a little experiment to process right now. Anyway, you don't have any chance to say no. So uh, I would like to invite especially Ro uh, well, I have to look row 2 to 12 to participate in a very little experiment. And in row 12 right now, there are six people sitting with a ball in their hands. Can you just so show the balls, please? Right. So these are semi-finished products. And you have to finalize these products and to produce them in a very simple manner. So you just have to pass the... But please wait for my signal. You just have to pass the balls through the lines until row two. So in row two right now, you are the most important persons, especially for my experiment right now. So please, if you get a ball, please raise your hand and show that the ball has arrived. One more information, the customer who would like to have these six products in the end to deliver, ordered all six balls together in one order. So it needs to be shipped together. So we have to start together all. So uh, just pass on then the balls, and uh, I hope you are ready now, yes? No, throwing the ball from back to front is strictly forbidden, will be treated as a complete loss due to missing quality. <laughs> okay, so, okay, ball, one, two, three, four, and now five, and six. Okay, so what could you see? Well, we started all together, but the balls, they did not arrive together here. So, fluctuations occurred, even in a very, uh, this, in a very simple experiment, you could see that obviously we had deviations. So, um, thank you very much for participating in this little experiment. <laughs> I just wanted to show you already that is uh, uh, already one step ahead. Uh, I also did this experiment in my uh, studies, in my uh, simulation, uh, with my simulation tools. So, obvious, um, originally we have 12 machines modeled here, representing these 12 rows. And let's concentrate, it, uh, let's concentrate on three of these machines uh, in order to show you this experiment again. Uh, so we have a continuous steady inflow, the balls. We have a probability uh, P to proceed to the next machine. 
and we have a probability 1 minus p to remain on the current machine, so if someone dropped the ball. OK, now um, the first ball arrives, and in a perfect way, everything is processed well. So we need three steps. OK, idealized situation. Next, next uh, ball came in and was processed perfectly, but then has to wait for specific um, perturbations on the machine two, and then has to proceed to the next one. So we, in total, we took two, uh, four operations here. So we did this experiment with 12 machines and a probability parameter p of 0 0.9, and we run this experiment 100,000 times. So in the end, we came up with this frequency distribution, and you could see that you always have fluctuations in the real world. So um, the consequence is even simple processes produce fluctuating output, and these fluctuations require non-equilibrium thinking. What is equilibrium thinking? That means that you try to keep your logistic system or sim single machines in a balanced position based on averages, based on mean values, not taking into account fluctuations. Those strategies use average values in order to simplify the reality. And indeed, the rea reality looks different. So I will show you one example of our real uh, scenarios we have to deal with. Uh, on, on the example of a steel mill manufacturing. The complexity driver are as follows. We have different production sites, so different locations here in Germany. We have a different number of variants to produce, so in that case, about 650 different steel types to produce and many more specific customer orders. And we have technologically demanding processes, starting with continuous casting over uh, adjusting, then hot roller meal processes, dimensioning, cold roller meal, annealing, and different coating processes in the end. But the flow restrictions really gave a picture of the complexity here. So this material flow network uh, we have to consider in such a steel mill shows how to produce products in, uh, in the, such a network. And if we concentrate in, on the hot roller meal in that example, we have an additional complexity. Uh, in that case, we have different slabs to produce on the hot roller meal, but in considering specific sequencing rules, approximately 200 sequencing rules. So that shows the reality we are confronted with um, in a real scenario. Conventional strategies try to solve this problem or try to deal with this problem in such a network in a centralized way so that every not every resource, every order is directly connected with a central planning and control system. Obviously, it does not look like that this is a simple task, and indeed, to plan and to control such a network is very complex. It seems to be that centralized production control uh, is not able to deal with a high number of influencing factors and frequent changes. So our approach is uh, to concentrate on every individual resource on every individual node or order within such a network and to enable it to decide on its own. So we, in a way, put a logistic object, an order, material, or a transportation, uh, transportation mean, in a position to act autonomously in an intelligent way. So per definition, we uh, say that autonomous control is the ability of logistics objects to process inform information, to render, and to execute the, uh, decisions on their own. I'd like to give you one example for that. Again, on the hot roller meal, we, in order to um, run autonomous control effectively, we need alternatives. And therefore, you see, we have alternative one, a hot roller meal, waiting orders in front of the, of the mill, so a queue, and another alternative with less orders waiting. An intelligent product now is able to decide, and obviously right now the decision is quite simple, so it decides for the uh, shorter queue length in order to be processed faster. We also concentrate on the decisions, on the decision, decision strategies uh, for these intelligent objects. In that way, we figured out that with growing network complexity, there are specific uh, strategies performing in a better way than others. 
Uh, for example, we also figured that waiting and allow other objects to act first contributes to faster solutions. But we also tried to learn from uh, biology. We actually uh, started a new research ap approach, and uh, I have set up a cooperation with the systems biology workgroup of Professor Hood at my university, and we are motivated from the fact that metabolic systems and cells need to perform well for a wide range of environmental inputs. Obviously, a cell is able to produce biomass under various conditions, and we would like to learn how. And the first uh, thing we are doing is to, uh, to uh, work on a common model and to understand the control structures, uh, the uh, network layout, and the methods to decide within such a cell, and to transfer then to logistics. That's the first step, of course, and as I said, we just started this cooperation. So let me summarize now my talk. Uh, the, I hope that you got uh, also the understanding that production logistics of the future is not the logistics of averages. This means that logistic systems should be prepared to deal with fluctuations in unbalanced environments. And finally, logistics as a science discipline aims to understand the complexity and to deal with various trade-offs with new or adapted production logistics methods, but also inspired by other disciplines. So thank you very much and be always on time.